The relevant packages that are used to achieve this can be downloaded via the links in the description box below this video. The first steps involve removing signals produced by the CCD camera itself, which will vary depending on the manufacturing characteristics of the camera. The two main processes are the removal of the bias level and the dark current. The bias level is a resulting signal from the readout electronics of the camera and is measured via a close to zero length exposure with the shutter closed. The dark current is signal that accumulates in the CCD over time, even if the shutter is closed. Therefore, like the bias frame, the dark frame is taken with the shutter closed, but over a long exposure time. The bias level and the dark current are then subtracted from all of the other data to remove these unwanted signals. The next steps remove variations in sensitivity between different elements of each path of the instrument. These steps are generally referred to as flat fields. The first flat field calibration, the detector flat, measures variations in the sensitivity of the individual pixels of the CCD using a uniform illumination of the entire camera. The second flat field calibration is known as a fiber flat and removes differences in the transmission between individual fibers of the integral field unit. Fiber flats require the telescope to be illuminated with a uniform surface. Therefore, astronomers will either use the sky itself at twilight or a specially painted and illuminated surface inside the telescope dome. Science data is then divided by the detector flat and the fiber flat calibrations to correct for any sensitivity variations. For spectroscopy using fiber optics, another important calibration is a tram line map. The spectrograph spreads the light from each fiber into a spectrum that stretches across the camera image in one direction. Additional fibers are stacked above and below so that each spectrum occupies its own narrow strip of the image between its neighbors. The tram line map shows where each spectrum is within the overall image. It is calibrated by tracing the light from each fiber across the same image used for the fiber flat. The tram line map is then used by powerful software to find and extract from each CCD image all of the light collected for each spectrum, while also rejecting any contaminating light from neighboring spectra. When using a spectrograph, it is important to calibrate the wavelength scale of the spectra. For SAMI, this is achieved by passing the light from a copper argon lamp through the spectrograph. Copper argon, when heated, emits light at thousands of wavelengths, which are known from our theoretical understanding of atoms. When passed through the spectrograph, these illuminated wavelengths act as markers and can be used to calibrate a full wavelength scale of the spectrograph. The final calibration steps involve removing signal introduced by the Earth's atmosphere. These steps are sky subtraction, toluic correction, and spectrophotometric or flux calibration. Sky subtraction removes signal from the Earth's atmosphere, which glows slightly, even at night. The toluic correction removes absorption of light in the red arm of the AO Omega spectrograph, caused by water vapor in the atmosphere. Finally, the data from multiple observations of the same target are assembled together in a spectral cube. The spectral cube can be thought of as a one-dimensional array of images of the galaxy at each wavelength, or as a two-dimensional map of spectra across the galaxy. Making the cube itself is a complex process, where the main step involves converting the observed photon count for each pixel to a flux value that can be used for scientific analysis. Once the calibrations are complete and formatted into a spectral cube, it is time to start doing some science on the galaxies. Aside from calculating the flux for each pixel wavelength into the spectral cube, several other data products are usually calculated to assist in the scientific analysis.